สวัสดีครับผม Stuart J. Rad นะครับ I'm Stuart J. Rad and welcome to Thai Bytes Live. I have no idea how many webinars we've done now, but they're a lot of fun. And today's topic is uh, especially fun. It's something that's very close to my heart. Uh, that is eating Thai food, and uh, I called this one eating Thai style. Don't fork it up. And uh, it's a little play on words, maybe from my uh, grandmother. She used to say b e t a in an Indian accent. You know, where's the fork and knife? And I don't know. I only have a fork and spoon. Um, but no, this is don't fork it up. Um, why did I call it that? Let me show you this. There was a um, an article that was going around the internet. Uh, I think probably about a couple of weeks ago. And um, and it's it, it was probably one of these things they were trying to find stuff to pad out an article. It said good American table manners manners that are rude abroad. And when you go down to number two there, it said putting a fork in your mouth. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. And then I saw that it said in Thailand, it says this will get you the stink eye in Thailand or Lao. And it created a a, a long uh, sort of conversation thread of. Um, you know, is it really rude to use a fork in Thai, or is is this where did it come from? How did they do that? Will Thais be offended if I use a fork? And many people are worried, they're concerned, what the deal is. So, what I thought today: these are the three things we're going to be going through: how to eat, what to eat, and who should pay for it. Now, I think that all of these. Now, somebody said that they're not getting any audio. Can you? Um, I'm. It's, it shows that my audio is going out. Can somebody else um, message if you aren't getting any audio, or let I can see that uh, one out song is having an issue there. If you don't have any audio, just send me a message through. But it shows me that my audio is going out okay. So I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, let's get back to it. Why? Um, so how to eat? What to eat? And who should pay for it? These are three really important things. And you might think that um, why, uh, how we eat should come second. But I, I just want to follow in on from this, from the fork. And we're going to learn some really valuable language when it comes to there. So, Thailand. One thing that's very funny when you're walking around and you'll see some uh, new people coming to Thailand, you can always tell them. Uh, sometimes they'll go into a restaurant and they'll ask for chopsticks. And so um, let's have a look. Why Thailand isn't a chopstick country? Now I'll show you this. This was actually from a link that was uh, put through, but it's come. It's come from a book, and I'm just going to read it through with you. Let's have a look here. Um, I'm just going to open up here now. Have a look, read this. So this was from a, an excerpt from a book. The Reverend goes to dinner. A Thai statesman tells. Uh, uh, okay, there was a typo there. King Mong uh, Mongkut. Uh, from 1851-1868, how they made how they made use how King Mongkut made use of an American missionary and learned to use uh, a spoon and fork. And so it goes on. And so we adopted Western tableware. We didn't really adopt it. We only picked out a few to adopt. Two. The p h a l a n g s turned up with tableware, 20 knives, 20 forks, 10, 100 spoons, and so on, and put them all on the table. When that happened, uh, second uh, king p r a p Uh, Prapin Kao, the younger brother of King Mongkut, invited Dr. Bradley, an American missionary, to go and have dinner with him at eight o'clock in the morning. The invitation was in English and specifically said dinner, but 8 a.m. The doctor and his wife, Mrs. Bradley, um, were rather mystified about dinner at eight o'clock in the morning, but they couldn't refuse it. The invitation had come from the second uh, king himself, so they went in full dinner attire. Uh, to the uh, palace, and they found a table set with all the f a l a n g tableware, knives, forks, spoons, and plates, and so on. They were requested to sit down, just the two of them, and Western food was served accordingly, like a grand dinner, six courses. And then the king was there, um, sitting on the chair with his family, with the royal court behind him, looking at how the f a l a n g made use of these implements. Dr. Bradley and his wife went through the dinner using each instrument correctly, and each plate, each cup, everything—wine glasses and so on. So after that, they took um, leave and went back home. And the king then knew how to implement these. So there you have it. Um, it was a bit of a long read, but 
I think that's fascinating and it explains um, why Thailand is a knife and fork, uh, sorry, spoon and fork country. Actually, they have, from going and using hands to eat mainly, if you've um, Kanto and Isan, you could you, you, you would still be there using hands. Um, it was all part of this push, I guess, um, through that period, through the 1800s and then 1939, you can see a whole new push by um, Bridi back then. And if you want to have some fascinating re reading, go and read these cultural edicts that were put out back then. But this was this slow transition to start to bring other things into uh, Thai-ness. And so now a very Thai thing is to use a spoon and fork. So let's have a look though, what, uh, what, we're call, what we call them in Thai, first of all, and I'll show you how to use them because it's a little different to what we're used to in English. Okay, so here we have, we have chan and som. So I'll, I'll be holding these up here. So first of all, now when you say them, you say chan som. Chan, say it with me, chan is a spoon. Now a spoon, that's with a high tone. Chan, chan and som, som. Now notice how my mouth is open for each of those. Ah, uh, that's the ah uh, ang. Uh, Chon, som. It's not chon som. Okay, som would be an orange or um, or vinegar, but this is som. Chon som, and you can see the word that I've put under there, kan. That's the measure word. Okay, so if I wanted to say one spoon, I would say chon ning kan or chon kan ning, because if it's one, you can put the number one after the measure word. So one fork, som ning kan, som kan ning, chon som. Got it? Okay. So if you are talking about these together, though, if I said, "Can I have a spoon and fork?" Not a fork and spoon, um, but a spoon and fork. I would say, um, "Can I please have chon som chut ning?" Now a chut is a chut. It's a set. So can I have chon som chut ning? One chut of chon som. And you can actually use chut with anything that would come as a set. Now, if we're talking about knives, that would be meat, meat, and knives aren't really used. So how do you do it? Let me just pull back to the camera here. So when we have this spoon and fork in hand, spoon goes in the right hand, fork goes in the left hand. Your fork in general doesn't enter the mouth, but it's not rude if it does enter the mouth. But what happens? Your fork holds down stuff, or basically you have them like this, okay? And so the spoon will be there. You put your fork in, and your spoon will be used as a knife and cutting things. Use your fork to put things on your spoon, and then the spoon goes in the mouth, okay? Like that. You're not holding them downwards like you might have a knife and fork. They're held like this, okay? And so you're just using this. You key a hand. Key means to sort of separate the food and tap, tap. Um, is to put it onto your spoon or is just move to from one position to another and then you put it in your mouth with the spoon. Now, there are occasions where you might put the fork in your mouth. But supposing you had luk tin, the little balls there of uh, pork balls or fish balls, yeah, you might dim and put it in your mouth that way rather than, and it's nicer than taking it with your fingers. So sometimes your fork may go in, but in general, the spoon is what enters your mouth. Spoon in the right hand, fork in the left hand. But it's not bad if you do do it. You won't be offending anyone. But if you want to get in and do it Thai style, that's there. And then we have meat. Now, you'll normally be, you'll see a meat um, in Western restaurants. They'll put them there. Sometimes it frustrates the heck out of me when I go to a Thai hotel and they'll want to, I guess, look very falang, and they'll only have a fork and a knife there at the breakfast table, and I'm, where's my spoon? I actually prefer to eat with a spoon, and I can use it pretty well as a knife rather than using the knife there, and the spoon gets everything on your plate into your mouth. Finally, we have takia. Say it with me, takia. Where did that come from? Now, takia, chopsticks. Doesn't sound anything like chopsticks or Chinese. Kuai kuai, chop chop. Quickly, quickly, chopsticks, quite zi. But the kia is the word in Thai for chopsticks. Now, you will always, if you go to a food court anywhere, even in Thailand, outside of Thailand, Singapore, uh, Hong Kong, you will tell, you can tell most of the Thais 
sitting in the food court there if they are because they're holding their chopsticks like this. Got them together and their hands down there and for some way, some miraculously way, they get it in there. Thais aren't great at using chopsticks. If you're in China, you'll see the chopsticks are held apart more and they're, you know, they'll probably hold further up the chopstick. But Thais, will, you'll see Thais generally, the chopsticks are held together. Where does it come from? Uh, let me show you here. So if we have a look here, let me just um, make sure my pen is working. Uh, this word, um, there's a word in Thai, I'm going to write it here. Um, it is called, well, that's a, that's a bit of a fat pen. Let me uh, reduce the size of my pen a little. Okay, so it's called to keep, okay, keep. Keep means to, well, to keep something is to basically hold it, uh, and my pen's not wanting to write on that image, is to keep, that's with a long E. To keep is to hold something between it, so you keep it between your fingers, and uh, and keep, keep. That's a, actually a Khmer structure to turn something into a noun that does it. So it's the noun that keeps things, it's the keep. And that word actually is a cognate from the old Chinese word, you might, uh, if you speak Chinese, this word here, okay? Um, and so that is gap, or this word here, gap. Okay, well, that goes down there. So that word there, there the same word keep, it means to hold something in between something, okay? So the up. But Thais don't really use them except for eating guay piao and noodles and things, okay? So mostly chan sam, spoon fork. Not fork, spoon, spoon, fork. Okay, chan, chan, som. Let's move on. Um, now, I have some great sentences here that you can use. Um, let me just move this out of the way because I don't want it disturbing you. So, you, um, I've, here is a great sentence structure. Can I please have a spoon? Now, if you do cracking Thai fundamentals, you would remember this structure from the thinking and meanings. Ka means please, like Oliver Twist, please, sir, can I have some more? Ka more. Okay, so this is ka to ask for something. And then clap at the end. So ka chan clap, can I please have a spoon? If you want to make it even nicer, ka chan do clap. Can I please have a spoon due too? But this due kind of makes it lighter. And if I want to specify one spoon, what's the word? Can. So ko chan kan ning krap. Can I have one spoon? Can I have a fork? Ko som kan ning krap. Can I have one fork? Can I have two forks? Ko som song kan krap. If you're a lady, use ka instead of krap. And if I wanted to say, can I have a spoon and fork? Can I have one set, one chut of chon som? Got it? And the reason why you might use that, you can see down there, we have I've written there chon lun lun. Now this lun with a low tone there. Let me uh, change the color of my pen. So we have I've got two words here. Say it with me. Lun. Lun. Lun is the act of having fallen bang on the ground okay so that if something is has lun it means it's already on the ground as opposed to luang chon luang so supposing you've got a little table here and um the spoon oh, falls off the thing so your spoon's sitting there on the ground if it's lun it means it's sitting on the ground but if you said chon luan not luang luan Oh, chan, sorry, chan luang, chan luang, it is luang. Chan luang, it means luang is the act of falling. So my my um, spoon fell, chan luang. My spoon is on the ground, chan lun. Okay, you can say oh, either of those. And so if you put them together, my spoon's uh, fallen on the ground. Can I have my spoon and fork? Can I have another set? Chan lun. Kha ik chut ning krap. Chan som. Lun, ka ik chut ning krap, my chan som. That's so my spoon and fork fell. Ka ik chut ning krap, can I please have one more? E, ka e, can I have another chut ning krap set? Okay, my fork fell, can I have another fork? 
some lun Notice I use the measure word. I don't need to say some again. My spoon fell. Can I have a spoon? Uh, would be chon lun. My chon lun. It fell or chon luong. Can I have another one? Got it? Okay. Uh, about five minutes more of the lesson. Okay, so this is this is how we eat. Now, let's get into what we eat. This is fascinating, especially for newcomers to Thailand. Now, in Thai, there are three types of food. Oh, actually, four main ones that we're going to be going through, but three, three types of food that you would um, be, be using in general. We have cow. We have gap, sen, and kanom. Say it with me. Kao, gap, sen, kanom. Kao, gap, sen, kanom. Kao, gap, sen, kanom. Kao, gap, sen, kanom. What are they? Let's have a look here. Um, so what is cow? Now you would probably know from gin cow. Cow is rice. Okay, so cow is any kind of rice dish would be your cow. Now notice it, when you're when you're eating normal rice, this this would be cow ho mali cow. So when people are saying gin cow, this is cow ho mali. So cow hom. I'll put that's a hom. Whoa. Hom mali is jasmine rice. Okay, so this is a standard rice in Thailand that you would be eating. My pen doesn't want hom mali. Okay, cow hom mali is jasmine rice. It's this white rice. So if you're cow soy, beautiful rice, people would think it's cow hom mali also. It's your jasmine rice. That's standard rice. This one here is khao gong. Okay, I'll write it here. Khao gong. Khao gong is your brown sort of ready rice. Um, so I'll write it. Khao gong. And they're, they're both um, falling tones. You can see from there. Uh, khao gong. Oh, it doesn't want to write. Khao gong with a falling tone. Khao gong is this ready rice. And this is khao niao. Can, okay, is the audio back now? Okay, so I'll go back there. You should have the audio now. I don't know, something funny has gone on there. Um, so we've just gone through, we have Khao Ho Mali, that's the jasmine rice or Khao Soi, normal white rice. We have Khao Gong is red rice. And then we have the Khao Niao, which is sticky rice. And so sticky rice, you would normally find only at an Isan restaurant. Um, I, it looks like my sound is is there. I can see it coming up. Um, okay, so that is cow. Then we have ga. Okay. So what happens when you are um, when you order? You'll say yakin cow, but you'll often hear many Thais say yakin gap cow. I want to eat gap and cow. So what is gap? Well, gap you would know from Thai means anything that goes with rice. 
So you um, You'll often say here instead of just gin kao, gin gap kao. So when you're ordering things, you would order the gap and the kao. Some people prefer to eat just kao. Some people eat, prefer to eat just gap. I normally only eat gap. I try and avoid eating the kao. I like eating kao, but it makes you really fat. Well, it makes me fat if I eat too much. So I try and avoid it if possible, but I love eating gap. So gap is all of the stuff that go with kao. So all your gang, all your tom yam, all of those kind of things would be gap. And you can see here some examples of gap, but basically anything that's not rice or noodles that you eat for the meal is gap. Okay, and so if I wanted to say, I just want to uh, order, um, for example, more um, patnam pig pao, it's my favorite more done in the chili paste, I would say, I only want the gap. I don't want rice with it, just gap. Because normally if you order um, just a plate of it, it'll come with rice. Okay, so gap is everything that's not rice and not noodles. So uh, I want to eat, but it's gap and cow together. The next, so we have cow, gap, and then the next final one in the main dishes is sen. So we eat sen, sen comes from, now if you know your Chinese, the word xian, okay? So uh, let's see if it's gonna write for us. Yeah, oh, that's nice. So xian, uh, you can picture it there, sen um, is long strips, okay? So um, to eat noodles would be gui uh, diao, gui diao. Now again, these are normally Chinese Thai, food traditionally isn't a noodle eating. They're, they're Chinese introductions. And that's why when you see the word gui diao written, gui uh, diao, you'll see mei jatawa written in there. And that's because it's coming from gui uh, diao in Chinese. Um, well, so gui diao. Oh, let me put that in there. So gui diao in Chinese is, is where we get gui diao. And it's these strips, anything noodly. Now, what about pad thai? There was a big discussion on that. Well, pad thai, if you go and it's a fascinating history, go and look up the history of pad thai. But I'll tell you, it's not traditionally Thai. Uh, it's a very fascinating story, but I'll, I'll let you go in and uh, investigate that yourself. Um, okay, so we have kao, we have gap and we have sen noodles and by the way um, another meaning for sen here having strings is basically having connections and so if in business in thailand or supposing some person got a job because of someone they know or they got into a school because of someone they know or they got a deal because of somebody that they know hmm, that doesn't happen in thailand um you would call it, you got it because of your sen. Somebody who has good connections uh, is kon mi sen. They have sen. Um, if you see a, a, an employee, um, you might say, oh, this is the new employee. Kobin dek sen. Dek meaning a child or a, a, a kid of sen. Um, somebody who has influence or who has connections. Okay, so dek sen, that's another funny use of or a fun use of sen that is very Thai. But sen in this sense is the type of food. And then finally, we have kanom. And um, basically, kanom is, oh, I've said that in my little dog, that's the most exciting word for my dog here too. Kanom means basically sweets or treats. So anything made with flour, sugar, bread. So kanom pang, pang from the French, pang. So kanom pang is, is, is bread, but it's, it's these sweets, anything flowery is kanom. Candy is kanom. So kao, gap, sen, kanom are your four main dishes. Um, okay, I think that's uh, it for the main lesson. I've actually prepared more that we'll be talking about um, things to order, but what I wanna do, I've seen questions have already started coming in here. So I'm going to go to the questions now. Um, okay. So how should I address the waiter or the food seller? Always as nong or pi if older or kun. Yeah, um, let, me, let me come down. I'll, I'll open another screen up down the bottom here. Um, what should you call the waiter? Let me change colors there. Um, 
Okay, so I'll bring this in a little. If they are younger, so younger than you, um, you would call them nong. Okay, nong with a high tone. Okay, nong is a younger brother or sister. So nong kap, nong kap, if they're younger than you. In many cases, the surfs, service staff will probably be younger than you. If they are definitely older than you, um, and you know you're not going to offend them, well, then you would call them older brother or sister. So that would be P, okay? So we did these actually in pronouns, P. Um, a very, just a normal standard polite way um, would be just your general kun kap, kun kap. So your kun, um, which of course we know comes from, oh, sorry, it comes from the Sanskrit word kurna, meaning respected one. So kunte, respected j, respected one. Okay, so kun kap, you can act, it's not rude to call someone kun kap, kun kap, and notice how that actually gets translated into Thai, hey yo, hey yo, uh, into English, sorry. Kun does not mean you, kun means respected one. So you can call them like that. If you're going and say you're getting tea made or, or on the kwetiao stall on the side of the road, they might be old enough to be your aunt. So you can um, call them pa or lung. So this is pa, falling tone is aunt and lung is uncle, okay? So pa, lung is okay, kun kap is general, nong if they're younger than you and pretty much most of the time they'll probably be your nong if you're over a certain age or pi, gotta be careful with pi because if somebody, they might be younger than you and you call them pi, they might get offended. So it may be safer to call them nong or if you're not sure, kun kap, kun kap. Um, great question. Okay. Um, Okay, the people saying, okay, what about um, if you cannot um, eat monosodium glutamate, uh, MSG? Yes, uh, let, me, let me write that down for you. So basically MSG, how do you say that? We, it's actually a, a really fun word to uh, put together. Um, we call it pong chu rot. Okay, so let's break this down. Pong chu rot, pong, with a rising tone, is powder. Okay, chu means to stick out. Okay, so you can chu mu kun, lift your hand up, and then rot. Now notice rot has this interesting spelling. It's a ro and a so from the Sanskrit word uh, rasa. And you know, if you spoke Indonesian, you also use the word rasa meaning taste. So the word for MSG is pongchu rot, monosodium glutamate, or in the olden days, my grandmother used to use the old word for this, epicure powder. Epicure powder sounds very nice, but pong chu lot. Um, sometimes you'll hear them call it by name. The main brand here, I guess, Ajinomoto is known for uh, pong chu lot. But what if you don't want pong chu lot? You would say this, uh, my sai pong chu rot crap if you're a guy, ka if you're a girl. So, uh, and I'll just write the pronunciation on there. Mai sai pong chu rot. That's pong chu rot crap. Or ka if you're a lady. Ka. Okay, me say pong chu rot crap. And they hopefully won't put it there, but chances are. If you, and you can often tell because of this dry kind of taste in your mouth um, afterwards that it's had MSG in it, a lot of soups, 
um, some tam will often put a whole lot of pung chu lot in there. Basically, anything you eat in general will have pung chu lot unless you ask. And if you ask for them not to put in it, some people will even be hesitant because they think, well, then it won't taste good and I'll get a bad name because you think my food doesn't taste good. So they might put a little bit anyway. So it's hard to get away without any pung chu lot in Thai, uh, Thailand, but you will find places that will do that. Okay, let me. Bami. Okay, yeah, so here we go. What is, where does bami come from? When we're, uh, actually, this is probably uh, a good classification of noodles. Have a look here. When you order noodles in Thai, Tiao, they will ask you what sen you want. Now, you remember we just learned the word sen. Sen, just think of sen as a strand, okay? This strand here. And so you will be asked, do you want sen yai? So yai, I'll use a J there for the y, okay? But it's sen yai, sen lek. So lek, so yai is big, sen lek is small or sen mi sen mi with a low tone and that mi actually comes from here in chinese mi mi fen uh fen is the chinese word for those who speak chinese there mi fen mi fen um so sen mi you would so these these ones here the sen yai is what we would call in chinese it's like he fen. it's the big fat flat ones sen lek a little there's they're not the vermicelli chelly noodles they're still out of the same stuff but they're much thinner um and they're, they're kind of round and sen mi sen mi could be um they're, they're also like round these are, sorry these are flat and small sen mi are round and small and then you have bami, okay? So bami are the Chinese egg noodles, which is the mi fen, sorry. So your Chinese egg noodles um, would be bami. Okay, so bami, ba, mi. And, uh, and in Indonesian, you would know that bami would be this yellow thing, but sen mi, um, are, are your yellow one? Sen lek, sen yai. So depending on what you get, I actually prefer the either senyai, the big ones, or the yellow ones. Okay. Yes. Okay. So here are a couple of things. Now, you would in in Thailand. Another thing, um, some people get a little confused when they're going into restaurants um, because they don't. If they've been outside of Thailand to a Thai restaurant, they've ordered. They think, okay, a certain sort of dishes are there, but actually in Thailand. We have um, different kinds of Thai restaurants. Your standard restaurant would be ahan tam sang. Ahan meaning food, tam according to sang. Sang means to order. Food according to order. Ahan tam sang. And most Thais, um, you just know what foods would be available there at the ahan tam sang. Um, and so actually, in traditional Thai food, um, and actually was talking to the, the executive chef of a hotel, of a five-star hotel here in Bangkok just a few weeks ago. And the, he was saying um, he, he's fascinated all about the history of Thai food and how it's evolved. But in the past, um, you would have your tam uh, lap, which is each person would have, uh, or if you're from the north, you might be familiar with the kanto when they eat. You would each have a set and you would have different pieces, or different bits of gap and your cow and different things and you would mix them in together and eat those. That's, that's how the people with money would eat. But the servants, they would all just be given, you know, whatever was left over. And so that would be dan diao, single plates. So um, when you go to a Tam Sang restaurant, it's normally this Dan Diao kind of food. It's the stuff that you find on the, uh, the street stalls or whatever. And the standard foods for this Ahan Tam Sang, if you go there, would be Kao Pat, Kao Pat, fried rice. We have Kapao. Now, Kapao is 
um, the basil. Now, Gopal, your, your normal choices of meats in these would be more. So I'll, I'll put here uh, more, which is pork, more, uh, that's with a rising tone, or gay. Okay, your, your, your main ones are more and gay, which is chicken. Um, sometimes you will have nia in there, but a lot of places they mightn't actually have the nia, but they will have normally more and gay. So kapat, kapat mu, kapat gay are the standard ones. Kapau, kapau mu, kapau gay. And they might also say mu sap. Um, I'll write it down here. Mu is pork. So, and then you have mu sap. Sap means uh, basically um, cut up or minced. Okay, so kapau mu sap. Uh, it's written like this, sap with a low tone. So rising tone, low tone. Mu sap is minced pork. Okay, and um, so that would mean pork. And so you would have kapat mu, kapau mu, kai jiao mu sap. Okay, there we have minced pork omelet. Um, lat na, lat na is like your long, the, 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 the senye, the big flat noodle in a kind of gravy, soupy sauce, and you'll see probably some kana in there. Um, uh, what is kana jian tai? I don't know what you call it in English. Um, but that, that's that's your lat na. And then you might have also patsi eel, which is, again, is Chinese dish, the flat noodles with the soy sauce and some kana in there as well, the vegetable, green vegetable. Um, so when you go to a tamsang place, they're not going to have probably maybe not tom yam. They might, won't have som tam. You would have to go to a more isan kind of place if you wanted to order these things, okay? But with these normal standards, they might have genki one. There's some fringe dishes that they probably will, or they might have some mudat dia or something, the, the pork that's uh, dried pork, um, but your standard ones. And then if you're asking for an egg on top of it, kai dao, okay? Kai dao, kai egg dao is a star. So kai dao, the, um, the egg, round egg and so kai dao and i like kai dao mai so a runny egg mai so it's not cooked all the way through okay so these are your tam sang kind of foods otherwise if you're going to eat isan foods you've got your som tams your kao niaos, your labs would be standard there um if you're going to the north you would have kao soi is um like these these flat hard fried uh noodles in the in the sort of curry kind of soup um you have your nampik uh, on nam, nam pick nom, the different chili paste you would get up in the north. If you go down south, you're looking more uh, like these um, <clears throat> uh, the curries, more of these southern curries. Okay, Geng Hang Le is a, is a typical uh, southern kind of curry. But if you're just in Bangkok and you're ordering these food, these are your typical Tam Sang kind of foods. Okay. Um, all right, let's go to another question. Uh, who, what have we got here? Um, questions, questions. Okay. Yeah, this is, okay, I, I, I mentioned, I mentioned here um, about who should pay. So we have two things. Um, let's have a look quickie. You might, you might notice. So there are two ways of saying, we say check, bin and you can see it written um check with a high tone bin uh well it's actually it's written bill but check bin as a normal thing and the reason that comes from is of course check bill now you would you could use check bin anywhere but normally in a um a, a restaurant, restaurant, and an established restaurant. Check bin cup, check bin cup, non cup, or check bin no cup. If you are asking for the bill, otherwise, um, you'll hear in a lot of food halls this word here, kit tang. Okay, so kit high tone, and then tang tang means to count the money. Because you would know normally <clears throat> if you are kitang, 
um, they would come and just look at, oh, you've got that, 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 uh, and they probably know, you know, average 30 baht, 50 baht, whatever, uh, 230 baht. That's 230 baht for you. So Kitang, if it's a place that, you know, so they're going to come around, normally outdoor kind of places where they're having, look how many plates you've had. Have you had a bucket of ice as well? They would Kitang. Otherwise, check bin. But check bin kind of works anywhere. Um, it just, just depends which one you want to use, Kitang or check bin. And remember, a final L, final R in Thai gets caught up and it turns into an N. Check bin, not check bill. Check bill, some people, huh? Oh, okay. Um, though you might hear some Thais trying to sound posh speaking Thai because I speak English, no, check bill, please. Check bill, ha. But actually, normal Thai way, check bin, ha. Okay, next question. Um, yeah, actually, Ken, that's there's a whole lot of questions. I'm going to try and get to them. But um, there are very few leafy vegetables used um, in Thai dishes. We have kana, which is more mainly in Chinese dishes. It's the kailan, I guess, um, green vegetable. Um, and, and then you also have um, basil. Now, if you go to a supermarket overseas, I've seen them in Australia and I'm sure in other countries, when you look at basil, they'll say Thai basil, but in, actually in Thai, we have two types of basil. You have kapao, kapao, and you have horapa, okay, horapa. Kapao is the, it's this small basil, and I ha it's very, very rare to get it in I guess Australia, I know, and, and I think they have to order it in from Darwin when they're getting in there and in the West. And so normally they would use more of this horapa kind of basil, which it gets called Thai basil. But if you're having real kapao, it's not made with horapa like this. It's made with the kapao. And um, yeah, that's one of the green leafy vegetables. In J and, and if you go to the West and they're ordering these things, sometimes you'll see them put broccoli and all these things, but they're not really Thai dishes. Get it, but but this again, this is some of the more Chinese inf influence. But um, that comes to a really interesting word that you'll find that a lot of Thais won't really enjoy eating Chinese food. Um, they will say it is lian. Okay, so what is lian? What do Thais like eating? They don't like eating lian. So lian. What does lian mean? It's kind of like um when you eat it is this i guess oily cup it's it's like this feel in your mouth that's left over um so it's a type of i guess this oily rich too rich kind of food that's been stuck in your mouth um too rich oily kind of food so often thais will say oh i don't like chinese food because it's too lian uh, when you eat it, it's it's much more crisp, I guess, to eat these Thai foods like your gang, gang kia wan, uh, or these things. It's not lian. Okay, so what don't Thais like to eat that you, they probably wouldn't want to eat lian food. Um, if you go to a um, normal dam sang, you can order those, kaupat, those kind of things. If you eat or to go to a seafood restaurant, things Thais would probably love to eat would be like ba pao or kung pao, pao meaning burnt, so the, 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 the fish done in uh, salt and over the, over the coals, um, bo pat pung gali, the uh, crab done in um, curry paste, gu pat pung gali, so it's, it's fried in curry paste and often done even with kao pat bo maybe, um, with uh, crab fried rice. But if you go to a seafood restaurant, order seafood, um, when you go there, Ning uh, is another classic at a seafood restaurant. Uh, is the, uh, what do you call it, the, the squid. Ning Manao, Ning is to boil Manao in lem or lime. Pamuk lemon and, and lots of, um, uh, what do you call it, the chili sauce with that, chilies with a pikino. And also, if you're eating oysters, hoi nang lom, the nice oysters, you must have the nam tim tale. Nam tim, I'll just write this, this is really important when you go. You, you cannot have seafood, pardon me. Uh, 